Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we're going to be talking about Quant Network, but also Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So, recently I shared on Twitter that I did purchase 10 QNT. I said it's announcements like this that make me realize the long-term financial opportunity we have right in front of us. Now, to me personally, whenever I look at QNT, whenever I buy one QNT, I really kind of calculate it in terms of us getting to like 10K, 20K, etc. per token. A lot of people think that that is ridiculous, but you know, again, I always look at utility and fundamentals alone. And when we look at QNT, the fundamentals and the utility there is just substantial compared to Bitcoin and 33% less supply than Bitcoin. I just see dollar signs whenever I buy QNT at or even around $100. And I look at it the same way that I was buying QNT at $30, $40, $50, $60, whatever the case may be. And now we have this incredible opportunity ahead of us and these incredible announcements. So <clears throat> let's actually talk about this, right? So we've been discussing SIA uh, with Nexi for a very long time. And we actually do see here, well, 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 it's going to be interesting since Nexi is a QNT partner. And shout out to San and L11 for this, but ECB chooses Nexi for digital euro prototype. The European Central Bank has chosen Nexi, the European Paytech leader, to develop a front end prototype for making payments with digital euros. And they selected five companies out of 54 respondents to the call. This is substantial, especially when you look at the overall connections to Nexi from Quant. They are the only project in this space that I would say has a partnership with the, uh, with them. And you know, yeah, sure, there's some bridges there between like Nexi and uh, what well, we'll talk about it in this video. Um, but we do see LAC Chain, Oracle, and Nexi there labeled as partners on the next you know page here. We do see Quant Network. Congratulations to Sia and even Nexi on their merger. This is an exciting step towards becoming the European Paytech. And we do see we're looking forward to working with you. And then down here, we do see Nexi Group is the biggest payment group in Europe. Yes, even bigger than Swift. And we do see down here, you know, QNT is integrated into Sia, 580 banks, 19 central banks. Sia merged with Nexi this week, another 1,000 plus banks and financial institutions and working on the digital euro. 2 million merchants. 120 million cards, 21 billion transactions, 5,000 plus employees across 15 countries. And uh, again, you know, that direct connection to Quant is substantial because it's going to show you the insights on, you know, first off, it, it, it's a domino effect, right? You know, they partner with Nexi. Well, well I should say technically, you know, see it with Nexi because uh, they do, they did do that merge. Um, and this allows Quant to be, you know, integrated into over 1,500 plus banks all at once. Remember what I've said in the past when we look at the partnerships that Ripple has and you kind of look at the connections that that specific partner has to other major, you know, banks, financial institutions, whatever, because all of that will be bridged to that token or through that mechanism uh, that is solving some sort of issue, aka interoperability, crossword payments, whatever. This is massive. And we do see down here, bonus, q and overledger in 580 bank uh, nodes. The breakthrough, you know, was achieved by integrating Quant Network's Overledger technology, the world's only DLT operating system that allows interoperability into the CN chain. Private blockchain infrastructure leveraging on 580 European network nodes within CNet. Now, listen. Even if this is nothing to do with Q&T, you know, it does not matter. At the end of the day, the value proposition is still there. The value proposition to buy Q&T at $100 compared to like buying it at 50 is still there. I don't really care about that, you know, $50 difference. I know to some people that does matter and I understand. Uh, but to me personally, like in the future, that $50 difference is really not going to matter. This is why I always say like the long term longevity of Q&T as an investment vehicle is remarkable con compared to most tokens out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then... Over here, we do see the connection between uh, Ripple as well. 
So shout out to Crypto Airy, but we do see ECB chooses Nexi for digital euro prototype. Nexi is the European pay tech that comes from the merger and integration of Nexi, Nets, and Sia. Sia and Quant have a big partnership with testing complete. And then here we have Volante SIPA instant payments as a service. The only multi-network managed service uh, solution for instance uh, payments providing end-to-end -end payment processing and network connectivity for both RT1 and TIPS as a managed service in the cloud. Now again, a lot of individuals in the XRP community always want to stir up a little bit of drama and uh, say that like, you know, XRP versus Q&T and compare the two and, you know, which one is better, whatever. Um, to me personally, I, I don't really look at that at all. Like, you know, a lot of people think that Ripple does not need quant technology because they have Interledger protocol, which is extremely misinformed. Uh, we actually did a breakdown on this. The, the reason why I bring this up is I believe that Ripple and quant have been working together for a very long time and we're going to talk about that in this video um, but also i just want to share with you guys the fact that when we look at ripple and what they are trying to achieve quant is very you know complementing that system and trying to provide you know the bridge between what ripple is trying to do with xrp to these financial institutions to these major banks to all these major clients quant is extremely lucrative for ripple as well and uh, we also do see on this uh, screenshot, this is the Volante connection to Ripple. So they have Volpay. It is a processor module. It speeds integration to the Ripple Global Settlement Network to allow for real-time payment and settlement. Um, if they did source XRP here, they would you know, allow for instant settlement, as you guys are probably all aware. Uh, this is more so kind of focused on cross-border payments and things like that. Uh, but it's also you know, global payments in general. It doesn't really you know, cater to just specifically cross-border payments. Uh, but this is, this is like the, the major connection of Volante for the longest time that we have been looking at. Uh, this is also in comparison with like the FedNow service that will be going live in 2023. Volante is a tech provider on that. Again, does it have exposure to Ripple with XRP? It might. We don't know. There's no confirmation on that. There's no pa you know papers or information on that. We could only speculate so much on that. But when we look at Volante, I do think that Volante is a, a pretty big player here. Um, I also do think that when we really kind of look at all the players here, Quant is also you know vital for Ripple. And why do I say this? Well, you know, go back to 2019. Quant mentioned, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't say that they mentioned working with Ripple, but they did mention Ripple um, a few times during this time frame, and they did actually integrate Ripple onto the Overledger uh, to allow for individuals to utilize, you know, the XRP ledger or so. Um, but we do see, we agree with Ripple CTO Joel Katz that an interoperability project that only connects blockchains together is not going to be enough. We need to connect all networks together, and I completely agree on this statement as well. And this article that is posted is from Quant's website. It's the Future of Finance Today. This is the the big thing that you guys are probably all aware of. Like this is like their their homepage. There's no direction here at all. It just kind of links to their homepage because that's at the time uh, what they were basically providing on the homepage. Since then, they have revamped the website. But on the homepage, it did show um, which networks were already kind of connected to it. I don't know if they have it here under networks. I know that. They had a few labeled here. I don't know if they have Ripple or anything like that mentioned here. Yeah, so they don't, but I'm pretty sure if you type in Ripple on their website, um, a few connections, you know, show up, but I don't think that they have it labeled on here anymore. But I, I, I remember us talking about it anyways, but uh, Ripple was like one of the main ones that they have assigned first off. Uh, in regards to like all the connections to the blockchains within this market. I'm sure that you guys are probably all aware of this, but all we need to know here is that it's very complimentary to Ripple uh, to have something like Quant out there because at the end of the day, yeah, interoperability is not just gonna, going to be blockchains communicating together. It's going to be blockchains you know, communicating with the legacy system. And how do you do that? You, you have Quant. I mean, like Quant is providing that tech stack. And I do think that it is also... Um, you know, noted to have this mention where you have these players like the Digital Pound Foundation that are working with Ripple and Quant. Like these are all the memberships of the Digital Pound Foundation. Yes, the digital like this is you know a nonprofit company. Like they are just experimenting. They are you know trying to uh, see what works. The reason why I bring this up is because these two players, Ripple and Quant, are always kind of you know, working together on some sort of thing. Like their name is always tied to these 
things uh, together. The reasoning for that is, like, to me, quant will be the interoperability layer. That is going to be the core of the system. Ripple will still play that vital role in regards to cross-border payments, uh, instant settlement, things like that. I think that the on-demand liquidity, you know, mechanism with XRP is very, very lucrative for a lot of major companies, SMEs, etc. Uh, but all of these players will be utilized in some sort of way. And to me, like, I'm not trying to, you know, choose the best layer one out there. I'm choosing the core technology stack, and then I'm choosing ones that have been proven time and time again. Ripple with XRP, it's just a no-brainer move that I am in, you know, XRP heavy, especially with Q and T. Um, a few of these other names on here, sure, they they could be mentioned here and there. I know Electronium is one that a lot of people kind of overlook. I think that that one is, you know, a little bit interesting. But I'm just right now, I'm actually a little bit over diverse, I, I, diversified. If I, I if I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, with a lot of my investments, but. These two always kind of come up in question. My number one holding is still always going to be Casper just simply because it's so, you know, cheap and affordable to buy. Uh, these two, it's a little bit harder to, you know, buy a, a ton. Um, like with XRP, you know, buying 10,000 is still a, a pretty, you know, hefty chunk. But the way that I look at it is like I continue to stack these two uh, because they have the most connections to things like this where, you know, it is memberships that are providing a ton of insights. Like you can see like the membership opportunity here. Um, they're just providing a lot more tech layers, tech stacks and tech information around CBDCs, the digital pound foundation, things like that. But also remember the UK, right? The UK is extremely ready. We have the ripple swell event coming up. Uh, we know that quant is working with the UK very closely on a lot of their major shifts within digital money. And we actually do see here, this is from the digital pound foundations website, introduction of the UK, uh, central bank digital currency. And they do mention a few things like here's like the benefits that it could provide to the UK. You guys could read this a little bit more. I'm not going to go in depth on this, but we do see central bank and monetary policy. Then we do see domestic and cross-border payments infrastructure, which this is what I personally believe. Uh, this is where I do think that Ripple comes into play. We will talk about, you know, what Quant is doing here in a second. And then we do see like the transition to a digital economy and then financial slash digital inclusion and social um, policy delivery. And then last but not least, financial crime. But all of this plays hand in hand, or sorry, I think that there was one more, which are a few of these other ones, but these are like just kind of talking about like systemic risk and stuff like that. There's a lot of uh, reputational and commercial challenges as well. They talk more so about like the B2B and the B, uh, B2C market. Um, but over here, this is from the Bank of England's website. Uh, this is their new forms of digital money. This goes back to 2021, June of 2021. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is I just want to mention interoperability here. Interoperability is mentioned 19 times in this article. Quant is the only major choice from the UK that they're utilizing for a tech stack to directly tie into their bank to their government and banks. We talked about this as well. When we look at this though, interoperability is such a big player here. It refers to the ability of users to switch without barriers or undue friction uh, between different forms of sterling money and different payment services. The bank recognizes the importance of interoperability between services, but is otherwise technology neutral subject to meeting its objectives. And there's so many discussions here. I mean, like, you know, here, here's a few other questions. Down here, the bank is committed to supporting innovation and improving how payments function. They're talking about the real-time gross settlement, uh, you know, program. You know, it's going to increase resilience and, you know, access, offer wide interoperability, improve, uh, you know, user functionality and strengthen end-to-end -end risk management. Again, all these could benefit by, you know, having that new form of digital money or, you know, infrastructure as well, uh, which we talked about a little bit with the UK. But there's so much talks about interoperability and we even do see like the bank further recognizes the importance of interoperability between services, but is otherwise technology neutral subject to meeting its objectives. And uh, we do see a lot more talks about it down here. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we know that interoperability is going to be a, a big key player. And we actually even see this quote down here, ensuring that new forms of digital money are fully interoperable raises important challenges for infrastructure. Interoperability that allows people to make payments between different commercial banks today with minimal friction is delivered by common infrastructure such as the UK's faster payment service. But whereas existing payment systems move assets and liabilities between commercial banks, new forms of digital money will be different propositions. I love to see them mentioning commercial banks here 
because I don't know if you guys remember, but Quant just recently, you know, listed on their website commercial stable coins that would play a, a vital role in actually solving this as well. This is why I say we, I, I really do think that everyone needs to be watching these two specific, you know, tokens. I don't know if they mention cross border payments at all. So, yeah, they, I mean, they even do here. Like, you know, the G20 has developed a roadmap for improving cross border payments. Um, such as stable coins and CBDCs. Like at, at the end of the day, I do think that the XRP ledger will play a vital role in uh, CBDC issuance because it does unlock the door for you know liquidity. Uh, and it really kind of unlocks a lot, honestly. But they do mention cross border payments, you know, making it cheaper, quicker, stuff like that. All the same, you know, buzzword effects that we've always been talking about with XRP with Ripple. All we know here, though, is that. Quant and Ripple are part of the Digital Pound Foundation. Is that a substantial name? Not technically. It is a nonprofit organization that is focused on technology information as well as really kind of researching it. But a lot of the problems that we are seeing in this specific article talking about, you know, new forms of digital money really kind of just lead me back to Quant uh, and XRP. You know, at the end of the day, we will see the major connections kind of unfold. I think that the, the, the last major one that I do want to bring up, though, is the cross-border payments in Latin America. Uh, Quant, again, is making their name known in the Latin America you know, region. Uh, from June of 2022, for example, they did mention like IBD or IDB Lab with LAC Chain. Uh, that is the big one that we've always kind of mentioned quite a bit. Their focus is definitely on cross-border payments. And it kind of brings me back to what I just recently seen in July of 2022 with, you know, Ripple, where they did post this article, you know, piecing together Latin America's fractured treasury flows. Uh, they do mention about treasury flows. They also mentioned about, you know, cross-border payments as well in this, talking about SMEs, the FX market, the FX rates, things like that, you know. It, it truly is something special to kind of connect the dots here. I mean, like, listen, are we you going to speculate a little bit more here? Yeah, sure we are. But we already know that Ripple has, uh, you know, a connection to Quant. Quant already provides a tech stack with them. Um, I wish that I could see that on their website. I know at some point in time there was um, a connection here. I don't know if it is even in their ecosystem. I just know that, you know, at the end of the day, there was a lot of connections to Ripple even going back to like 2019. And even today, it's a lot more substantial. I wish that I could see the... I think it might have been in like missions and... Their mission and vision. I don't know if it's even here. Um, but I just know that there, there's so many connections to Quant from a lot of these players. And I think that the major one is always going to be Ripple for me. Just because they are a very large name in crypto at this point. They've been uh, around so long. And at this moment in time where we are seeing cross-border payments kind of being ushered in and, you know, kind of focused on instantaneous payments. Uh, or I shouldn't say ushered in. Um, innovate it further and having these technologies ushered in. That's what I meant to say. I apologize. But having that opportunity to really kind of look at you know, tokens like XRP that is providing a huge opportunity for cross-border payments. I mean, you even go to the cross-border payments section on Ripple's website, you scroll down, and you could just see XRP being at the center point of all of this to streamline these markets, open a lot more opportunity, open a lot more financial opportunity as well for a lot of these SMEs, these major companies, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, this is huge to me. And I really do think that Quant and Ripple together could revolutionize quite a bit. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more players. It's not just going to be centered around Quant and Ripple, but these two together are an absolute giant in this space. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, and notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful night. Remember, guys, are on this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.